my parents still live in the house that I grew up in, except for the first year of my life. And in our backyard, we had this huge fruitless mulberry tree that was beautiful. And I remember that tree for, I mean, it was just a beautiful tree. I remember it vibrantly in my mind, in my memory. You know, it, it became a problem eventually because it got so big that we had to get rid of the trampoline in our backyard. And that disappointed me, but it was a beautiful tree. And I remember we had a, there was a little garden off to the side of the patio in our backyard where my parents had this bird bath. And I could go out in the backyard and I could sit under the tree and I could watch the birds in the spring and summer playing in the bird bath, dipping themselves in, shaking their wings to clean off the dust and the dirt and the grime. And it was just, it was fun just simply to watch the birds getting clean and at play. And in winter, some would even show up and ice skate on the bird bath. I, I have no idea what that was all. I, I thought they all flew south for the winter, but these birds, they'd stay behind. They were like, no, <laughs> no, there were no winter birds, kids. Just kidding. But as I've thought about baptism, and I can't help but get this image of the bird bath out of my head and how we have the baptismal waters that invite us to come and receive a cleanse. And why a cleanse? I mean, we're almost like a bodily cleanse. Because baptism, it's an outward. You know, the waters touch our head or, or we're, we're immersed in the waters as if we're taking a bath to cleanse the outward parts of our bodies. But baptism, truthfully, through the Holy Spirit and through God's forgiveness, is really like a cleanse, like that bodily cleanse that some people do once or twice a year, that they go through these strange dietary rituals for about five to seven days to clear the toxins out of their bodies. I've read about these cleanses. I've never tried one because, for one, I can't imagine drinking nothing but or having nothing but water for seven days or nothing but juice or these strange concoctions of foods that they come up with to cleanse the toxins from your body. I've been tempted at times because, apparently, they help these... If, if the doctors who support these things are correct, they can help with so many medical issues because the toxins that reside in our body they say are higher than probably ever in history because there's so many preservatives in our food, there's so many chemicals even on our natural foods like fruits and vegetables and, and things of that nature that we have a higher concentration of toxins in our bodies than ever before. And I don't know, I don't know how accurate any of that is. And I've never tried a cleanse, so I can't tell you if it really works. But they, the claim is made that it can help with allergies, like it, it can help with maybe even arthritis and and all these different things, you know, but these kind of things that seem minor but can cause us great frustration and pain and illness in our lives, that these cleanses can help clear all of that out. And not only that, but restore the energy that we have found so lacking in life at times. We clean out the toxins and suddenly we have more energy than we never had before. But it's an inward thing. It's not, a, it's not something you rub on your skin and let it absorb in. You have to do this dietarily and allow all those toxins within you to be flushed out. Baptism, while an inward act, reflects such an inward reality in our lives. Because it reflects the inward state of our separation from God. So that baptism communicates the reality that we are being reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. Baptism reminds and enacts the filling of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that comes in and cleanses us of all impurities. That overcomes the sin that dwells within our hearts. So that we're no longer the puppets on the strings of sin, doing what sin wants us to do, unable to control our desires. So that we hurt ourselves, so that we hurt one another, so that we live in selfishness and hate and greed and division. But it purifies us inwardly. It cleans out those spiritual toxins of life so that we're drawn to God, so that we're drawn to one another, so that we're empowered by the Holy Spirit to proclaim the good news that God is drawing us to God and one another, even before we're aware that there is such a thing as grace. This is what baptism 
communicates to us today. So we're going to be thinking over the next several weeks about the bird bath. And today we think of the bird bath, the baptism, and the cleanse that it provides our inward being. It flush, flushing out those spiritual toxins so that we can become people whose lives both proclaim and reveal the good news of Jesus Christ and God's love at work in this world. We studied Ephesians today in Sunday school, Ephesians chapter 3. And we talked about how the message of Paul in Ephesians is one of the gospel going to the Gentiles. But underlying all that is one of God reconciling enemies with one another. Jews and Gentiles were enemies. They didn't get along. But through Jesus Christ, they are being brought together. This is a reality that we confront today in this world. We are divided among so many lines. Lines of power, lines of race, lines of economics, social lines. All these lines are drawn in the sand, keeping us apart from one another. But baptism communicates to us that the Holy Spirit is at work. The Holy Spirit that was at work in the prophets in the Old Testament that filled prophets such as Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Elijah, Elisha, even Moses, and gave them a message to the powers and authorities of this world that the way humanity is living is not the true way for human life. Jesus Christ reveals a much better, much deeper, much more fulfilling plan for us as men and women, us as human beings in this world, than we have ever lived out on our own. If we can, like the prophets, like Jesus especially, John the Baptist before Jesus, if, if we can embrace Baptism, if we can embrace the anointing of the Holy Spirit that calls us to go out and speak the good news to the powers and authorities of this world, we can be the revelatory presence by the power of the Holy Spirit and God's grace that enacts God's transformation in people's lives and in our communities in this world. We have a great and powerful call by our Creator to reveal to this world that the reality we live is a false reality and that God has something much truer, much more real, much more hopeful in store for us. To quit trying to, over, to overcome one another and join together as one body with one God governed by one love. That's baptism for us today. That's the baptism that offers all of us forgiveness. That's the baptism that offers the power of the Holy Spirit to all of us so that sin need not have power in this world any longer.